Okay then, I guess we finished. We were talking about <coughs> lock washers last week. Can you reuse this? This is what called what kind of washer? Lit lock. Lit lock. Can we reuse? Yes. If it has springy, 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 little springy, you can reuse them. And there's usually a washer underneath to protect the aircraft. Okay. Is there usually? There's always, yeah. except for a few mm -hmm. exceptions. This part never ever goes against the what? Skin or the aircraft. The aircraft or the component. What goes between the component and this? Washer. Washer. Everybody's with me on this one? Yes. Yeah, I just feel like this is one of those things where I say it and I get out there and it's like, oh, I put the lock washer on and then. All right. You know what else I'm seeing a lot of in class? I'll bring it up. Is uh, the bolts uh, uh, with the nut on the bottom? And they'll say, well, how are you going to safety it? Well, I'm going to safety wire the head. What keeps the nut from falling off? <laughs> um, so what do you need to put the other end? Well, it's great if the head doesn't move, but the nut's still going to fall off. So you got to have a what? You cotter pin and castle nut. You can do castle that. Did, uh, cotter pin and castle nut, or? Lock washer, self-locking nut. So lock washer, self-locking nut. Okay. Lock tight. Lock tight. Lock tight. Cross that. This lock. Listen, call it. Cross cross that. Cross thread it. Cross thread it. All part. All right. Uh, star locks is what we call these things. Doesn't say that, but I call them star lock washers. They call them internal tooth cat plated steel lock washer. This is the internal tooth. And next one better be external. External. You know what's funny is, well, it's not funny because you're not going to laugh. Uh, <laughs> this is this, what you will see on bolts. So AN3 is all the way up because AN3 is the smallest. And I've never ever seen anything other than this in aviation. On the, in, the uh, external, you'll see those on screws only. So this tends to be screws, this tends to be bolts. It's not written down anywhere that I'm aware of, because you can get them in any size, but just so you know, if you got a bolt with one of these, people go, what are you doing, you're weird. You're weird. So you want to check that car on All right, cannot reuse these. Non-reusable, that is non-reusable, <coughs> that is non-reusable. <coughs> Can you reuse these? No. no. If you use one of these, what must you also use? A washer. A, washer. A regular washer. Alright. Screws. <coughs> I don't know where it's written. I don't think it is written. I think it's just an observation on my part. Anytime you see this right here, can you see what I'm pointing to? Shank. Unthreaded portion. Unthreaded portion. Grip. Called grip. <clears throat> that is a structural type screw. So there are screws that are structural, meaning they have the, the components of a bolt, but they're smaller. Well, they don't have to be. They're a number 10. Number 10 screws, the same size as what size bolt? Three, three, sixteenths. three sixteenths. So number 10 screw is the same as a 3 16 bolt. If you see it with, and this is an observation, any sort of grip area, then it tends to be structural. Like, I know this is a structural screw right here. Yeah. So if it's um, if it doesn't have that uh, flush grip area, does that mean it's non-structural then? <clears throat> Probably yes. Okay. But not, not guaranteed. Like I said, it's, just, it's an observation I've made. All right, I think I did a, yes. So, this is real life, what we just looked at a second ago. So we got filister head, the washer head, truss head, pan head, which looks an awful lot like a filister head, and countersunk. Countersunk's easy, washer head's easy. We have the filister, which one's the filister? That one, 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 one. one through it. One. What's the washer head? Three. Three. That's a structural screw, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Truss head. Two. 
Fan no. Head? Four. It's four. Trust, Trust head, head is four. Trust head is four. Trust head is four. Countersonic. Five. Now, if you're watching online, my face is right here. So you can't see anything. So, all right, let me see. I think I did it this way. <gasps> yes. <clears throat> Philister. Washer head. Trust head. Fan head. Countersonic. The truss heads are pretty much a ubiquitous, uh, non-structural, holding panels and such on the external part of the aircraft. Same with these countersunk. <clears throat> these right here are uh, one through four. One, two, three, and four are different than five. In what way besides the countersink? Machine screws. What's that? Or machine thread screws. Everything else is machine thread. One, two, three, four is machine thread. It will take a nut, a regular nut. Number five is not machine screw. It is a, in automotive we call it a sheet metal screw. <coughs> so I guess I still call it that. Uh, no, I don't. In aviation we call them PK screws. So they like the Parker Kalon. And I don't know, I threw this in there just as a matter of who, who freaking cares, but. Um, <clears throat> but there is a difference between the Phillips screwdrivers and Reed and Prince. Even though everybody, every time there's a plus, you call it a Phillips. And see, Phillips screwdriver has about 30 degree flukes and a blunt end, while the Reed and Prince has 45 degree flukes and a sharper, drew a sharper pointed end. The Phillips screw has beveled walls between the slots. The Reed and Prince straight pointed walls. In addition, the Phillips screw slot is not as deep as the Reed and Prince. <clears throat> This one makes a better shiv. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, I've noted different sizes of Phillips head screwdrivers. Number ones tend to be more like a reed and print, right? yeah. smaller screwdrivers. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's a good observation. Yeah. That's what exactly what I was going to say. Oh, he said first. I know, so I'm just stupid. You just do better. You read it. Good or Different types of heads. Slotted or flathead. Flathead. flathead or I was called straight blades when I was growing up. Uh, got a <laughs> torx head, which comes in varying sizes. Greatest head. Yeah, yeah those <laughs> things suck. Torx. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, torx kick ass. They suck. Like the head is like that. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. 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 There is a torx set, which. I know. Do you, do you have a couple of these? We call them Swazi bits. That's not the purpose. For obvious reasons. And uh, the people who use Phillips on them, we called them dumbasses. Yeah. <laughs> it won't fit. Careful, Jack. YouTube's not going to like that. And the tri wing. What it is. <laughs> never seen this one. It's the truth. All right, let's see. If I had contacts, driver is slotted, standard, Phillips, Allen Corps. Robertson. Oh yeah, the Robertson. I use those for uh, installing <coughs> tile floors. Yeah, I was gonna say this is like like residential construction. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. That comes with a pocket hole set. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's how you figure this out. This looks like that one. That one looks like that one. That one looks like. That. <laughs> if this is something that you need help with. Yeah. Yeah. There's an awesome far side cartoon that talks about you know, being at school for dummies and they got a straight blade and he's like pointing how that goes in there. Idiocracy. Like idiocracy. That's, that's a little too close to home anymore. I think the big takeaway is uh, don't try and put a Phillips or a Reed and Prince in there because it's offset. It won't work. What do you use the shit for? What is that? Yeah, like why, why have they? Have they already um, seen why they do? I don't know. Uh, isn't the tri wings again observation? All of the tri wings I've ever seen were titanium. Mm. Mm. It's the um, actually for the mechanically decline. And titanium really light up well in a glass bead booth. It'll okay. Light up well in the glass. Yeah, bead really bead. sparked out well. Mm. Mm. Okay, what kind of screws are these? <laughs> Parker Kalon, they made them. In automotive, we call them sheet metal screws, but. In, in, in aviation, we call them PK screws. This one is a uh, blunt end, this one is a sharp end, otherwise there's no other difference in that. These do not go into nuts. That is the big takeaway here. If you try and, so, inevitably what, ha what would happen in the field, 
is you know you would disassemble an aircraft for an annual inspection, which involves removing all the panels and plates and inspection holes. Some of them are held in with sheet metal screws like this, PK screws, and some of them are machine screws. And it's really easy to tell. You look in the hole, and if it looks like a nut inside there, then what kind of screw does it take? Not a truss Not that screw. one. Not this one. It takes a machine screw. <clears throat> and if it has uh, one of, let me see, I should do next picture. Yeah. Uh, as a Tinnerman nut or something like that, then it must take a PK type screw. I've never seen that before. There is. Those are like all over On our birds, we don't use PK screws. Okay. So inevitably, when it got time to put back together and the boss wanted the airplane out today, he would assign somebody who had not worked on the airplane and they would just grab a handful of screws and a screw gun and go to town. And they would shove some of these into some of the uh, nuts, some of the... Now, these will not go well in a nut. It will not go well for you. Um, <laughs> however, if you've got a Tinnerman nut, you can kind of force a machine screw through without too much problem. It'll, it'll take. So you do have to pay attention to what you're doing and make sure that you have the, the uh, PK screws go into these type of nuts. <clears throat> so these over here on this side, they're caged. So the piece of sheet metal will go right in between like that and it kind of holds it in place. So you can see it goes through and then this is one side, that's the other side. So it holds it in place and then you put the screw through. These right here, there's nothing to hold it in place. You just have to hold it like a nut and start it. These are called what? Timber nuts. It says right on there, timber nuts. Would this type of screw go into a Tinnerman nut? No. 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 Of course it. It's hard enough. All right, so Phillips head truss, stainless steel machine screw. Do you think these are uh, structural screws? No. 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 Right, so they're not going to be used for structural components. So you have to think this through, like on my airplane, or all Cessnas, or all airplanes, there's a lot of inspection panels, about yay big, on the outside of the plane. I don't know, how many do I have on my wing? Uh, a lot. million? Uh, uh, like 20 per? 20, 20 per wing? wing? Yeah. These guys pulled them out. How many was it inside? <laughs> oh, you did the inside. <laughs> and I had to put them all back on. <laughs> all right, yeah. That's just on. <laughs> and then I had to put them all back on right after he left. So. <laughs> <laughs> what were those pins, the, the ones that were held like pins? Oh, just push pins? Yeah, that's a, I don't like those either. <laughs> digging their nails. The carpet holds it down. Uh, all right, so all of those inspection panels are non-structural panels. So they're going to get screws like this. The fairings that slide up and down on the wing struts and kind of make it look nice. Non-structural. The screws that, for the most part, hold on. Um, any, any sort of fairing or, or something like that. Non-structural. That's what you're going to use. The tail cone, wing tips, non-structural. Cowling? Um, yeah, cowling. Non-structural. Being non-structural, you sure do need a lot of non-structural panels to fly. I know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, same thing about countersunk. You guys know about countersunk. All right. Um, what do we see? Structural grip. Grip. Right, grip. All right. Then I even wrote structural screws. So we've got a long grip area right there. So that's going to be structural, structural component. So you cannot substitute one of the stainless steel we just looked at for one of these. Also notice the difference. This is stainless steel, non-structural. What's different about this? Yeah, it's plated like an AN bolt. All right, um, again, we see the grip area. So we have structural stainless structural. <coughs> man head structural stainless. All right, then we get into nut plates. Nut plates. They're not the worst thing in the world. I think I have the worst thing in the world here. Uh, so nut plates. The problem with nut plates, what do you think these holes right here are for? Yeah, rivets. Rivets! That's no, in case you miss the main hole, you have at least a... I was <laughs> thinking about that. That's like, it's like a, yeah, they, they, they're self-locking and they just, <laughs> they're stuttering, hey, leave them alone. That's, they're they're self-locking and they're fucking okay. riveted to the airplane. So of course they're going to wear out. They're going to wear out. And mine are all like that. Yeah. So how do you fix that? Replace, you replace them. You got to oh, replace them. See, and it's painted. Airplane's painted. So you got to. Uh, that's what I'm saying. The yeah. top left one, that centerpiece comes out, right? We had a couple mm -hmm. where they did that. It slides back and forth in case you have a misalignment. 
it lines it back up, but yes, it does slide and, and there's, there's only a little metal spring there's tab. There's a tab right there that holds it in place. So there's all different types. This particular one right here, this one is also a self-locking mechanism. It is crimped on both ends. I think I told I know I told some of you guys a story about how I had an airplane with a whole bunch of these on. We, we were building the airplane and we installed a bunch of these to hold the cowling on and I had one side and the other guy had the other side. And I, we were using um, non-structural uh, stainless steel screws to go in here. They're not a good match because this is really crimped hard. And to get the screw in, you know, if you don't do it just right, you end up stripping out the head with your drill gun. It's like, I'm just fighting it. And, you know, finally I've got my trusty snap-on ratchet. He went, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm really just forcing it. The guy on the other side, zip, 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 zip. And he's done. He's like, what's your problem? Yeah, I'm done. You got two in. I'm like, I don't know, man. What do I do? He's like, well, all right, I'll give you my secret. And he whips out a drill gun with a, with a uh, tap on the end. He just tapped them all. <laughs> so that it got rid of the self-blocking mechanism. Oh See, it worked real well now. You do understand the anatomy. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Yeah. The Dell clamps. Next to the worst thing in the world, the Dell clamps. Yeah. If you, if you don't hate them, you don't know what they are. So I don't know why I have them in here. Maybe just to tell a horrible story about a uh, guy I worked with it right before he started, he ripped his finger off one of these. I mean, he this one. Yeah, so yeah. different well, size holes, you know, and he needed a bigger hole, so he just put it on like a ring and went up to the drill press. And <laughs> drill bit caught the end of it and ripped his finger off. Are we going to use those in class though? Not in my class. Ah, uh, here's the worst thing in the world. Much. I don't know which one's worse, that or rib nuts. These suck so bad. What? So, rib what? Nuts? Yeah, we need to use some of those. Very rare. Oh. Okay, the problem with rib nuts, if they work, they're wonderful, but when they don't work, they're horrific. And so, I think I have a, yeah, so this is what happens. So you have an installation tool, and it's a rib nut, so it's part rivet, part nut. And you put it on this tool right here, and you screw this on the tool, then you squeeze the tool, and it squeezes this up, and makes it a little bit of a rivet, and then you have threads in there. It works well for a period of time. Then at some point, somebody tries to force a screw through there, cross-threads it enough to where it starts, and everybody's got a drill gun, so they do it, and now the drill gun is just spinning, like, well, it's just spinning, not going anywhere. So what they've done is they've managed to cross-thread the screw into the rib nut. They're spinning it, the rib nut, in the aluminum, creating a nice big, fat, wide hole. This thing will never work again, so now you have to get in there with vice grips, and you got to get it, you got to drill it off, find an oversized one, and then put it back in. So it just, mm -hmm. inevitably, it seems like it's, somebody breaks it, and they just barely figure out how to get the screw in, and then you're the guy that has to fix it next time. And it's always the last peat bolt of the thing you're putting it into. You have to take it all same apart. With the, same with the nut plates. It's the last screw, and then yep, it's always the last fucks screw. off. So, you know, in aviation, you have to be careful with this one, but it still holds true. And I was taught in the auto industry, you know, because we're hanging fenders and all kinds of stuff, is you never, ever put a bolt in and tighten it and go to the next. You always put them all in finger tight, then tighten them all up. And that's still true in aviation, but we have to take it one step further. You have to count how many you just put in and count how many you just tightened, and then do it one more time so you don't forget anything. Oh, yeah, there's a rib nut movie. That goes in. Squeeze it. Yeah. Take out the mandrel. Woo, you're done. <laughs> it looks so fun. It is fun. <laughs> the first time. <laughs> For Until this starts spinning. Then we make those. Then we make those out of steel. Uh, what? Then we make those out of steel? Aluminum. You gotta squeeze them. Yeah, yeah, I understand that, but they could make like an engineered section that could cripple. Maybe. Oh, yeah, steel ones. Go ahead. Jack nuts. What's a cripple? I have Jack. steel ones that are called jack, jack nuts. Yeah. Okay, cool. Use them on my car. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Named after my dog. Hey. Zeus Fasteners. That's how we. People, why do you spell your dog's name like that way? Yeah. So I just do. That's so. That middle thing. You have to get to know me. What? What's that middle thing? I said that. Is it a thing? I said you have to get to know me. That middle thing. What? Oh, I'm just talking about something because you were all tripping out on part. What? I'm seeing it right now. 
This part? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's the spark part? in the box. Yeah. What? <laughs> just, we're just like, I, just, we're both just like, what the fuck is that thing? And okay, like, so these are oh, quarter oh, turn or... Um, yeah, this is a quarter turn fastener. Quarter turn fastener. You just turn oh, up a bit great. of a quarter turn. These actually take a special little wrench called a Snoopy wrench. They're kind of cool. But or a dime. Or a dime or flatbed. Or your dog. Yeah, that's fine too. Right. Right. So these are just quarter turns. They're non structural. You just push in, turn in the quarter. And usually what happens is when you're putting it together, this little thing right here, the entire thing goes to the offside of the spring and nothing goes in the middle. <clears> and you just keep turning and turning and then you have to take it apart and try it again. So the spring goes up through the middle, you pull it, and it pulls it on tight. So Zeus fasteners. Like Zeus yes. DZ. Uh, they have the, the rivet versions of those, right? Where it's, I guess, where it's the Quarter turn metal rivet. spring, per se, is fixed in, and then you just rivet the whole plate on. So it's kind of like a nut plate, but for Zeus fasteners. So about cam locks? Uh, I guess that's what the cam locks Like that? N uh, so like that, box. but like that, but but it's uh, but it's a bar instead of just it being a male right. end. For the I feel these are a little more common. So you have a receptacle that will go on your airframe, and then this part sticks in the cowling. And then the nice part about these is they fall out, you lose them, and then they're very expensive. <laughs> All right, uh, I used to cover Cherry Max and such. Uh, I know Larry's going to cover Cherry Max. Blind rivets um, is another. Cherry Max is a brand name. But we're talking about blind rivets, which I don't think you guys talked about in Phil's class really. No, no, yeah. no, I'll just kind of briefly go over them. Um, one of the things about blind rivets, so blind rivet is, you guys, when you have rivets, you obviously had a rivet gun on one side and a bucking bar on the other. Well, a lot of times you can't. You can't get a bucking bar in this little space, and so you blind rivet it. Blind rivets are a little pricey. Um, geez, even when I was doing it, they're about a buck a piece. Now they're probably, you know, five bucks a piece. And, but you would get lazy mechanics who would just pow, 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 and they drive them. Now you're familiar with pop rivets, right? Mm -hmm. All right, well, it, there's, so we have blind, that's a blind rivet, but it's a non-structural blind rivet. We actually have structural blind rivets. And I'll show you a little video. They have locking collars, and they're just this engineering little marble. Uh, so it used to be, back in my day, before the new AC4313, which is not new anymore, uh, it really, there wasn't a lot said about it. You just kind of do something, oh, well, you know, we're using blind rivets for Cherry Max for uh, AC 4313. And then AC 4313 came out with, I think this worth this in. Blind rivets are used under certain conditions when there is access to only one side of the structure. Typically, the locking carriages on blind rivet are not as good as a driven rivet. Therefore, blind rivets are usually not used when driven rivets can be installed. Blind rivets shall not be used. Yeah, this is 4313. In fluid tight areas, so what would that be? Gas yeah. tank, all right. On aircraft air intakes where the rivet parts may be adjusted by the engine, on aircraft control surfaces, hinges, hinge brackets, flight control actuating systems. Guess where we always found them? Aircraft flight, flight control engine. surfaces, because they're. Yeah, they're met, they're sort of not in. How the hell? There. Yeah. So I was, that's what I was wondering in Phil's class. I was like, how the hell do they build those rudders and stuff like that? Just... You, you peel the skin back? and you work it as you go. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, did you talk about tungsten bucking bars? Oh, I can do talk about that. Yeah, my coworker has one, it's super heavy. Change your life. Yeah. It'll, I, I bring, I have one. Uh, it's a very small one, it's um, four times that size. And it's freaking heavy, it's, it's so heavy. I had to get inside my air box, and, and once you've used one, I said, yeah. you'll never go back. It is just, they're phenomenal. Yeah, but they're like 500 plus. <clears throat> Uh, I, I tripped it up to five, and I was like, ah, man. Yeah, my small one, I think, was 150. It's the only way I could get in the airbox and do it. So, anyway, uh, let's see. But, yeah, you peel them back. They're peeled back, and then you, you bring it together. And then, like Cessna, the, the last row is on the outside. But, yeah, you use very thin stuff, spoons. Uh, wing attach, fading landing, or fading floats. I think there's more to this. Yes, and then it goes on to say, Caution, for metal repairs to the airframe, the use of blind rivets must be specifically authorized by the airframe manufacturer or approved by a representative of the FAA, AC-4313 cable. So a DPR then? So can you use blind rivets anymore like we used to? Not like you used to. And you can only use it if it's specifically authorized. It's one of the only places I've ever seen in 4313 where we go to that book because we don't have data where it says, hey, if they don't say you specifically can, you can't. So that creates a problem because when you're inspecting an aircraft, you find a bunch of blind rivets in the control services. What do you do? 
not sign on it. You can't, it you can't accept it unless you can go back and find a, uh, uh, a 337, which you guys know about now, mm -hmm. that was signed off and approved previous. We, uh, the, it says, oh, don't use it for like around flight controls. There's a big rubber piece that goes around the transmission cowling of a Huey. It's called a boot. And we specifically used blind rivets with really fat, skinny washers on the rubber so that way it doesn't, so that way it's an uh, environmental shield. But it's just funny because it's like $3 million part sitting right underneath it where you have a blind rivet with a washer about 20 thousandths of an inch thick sitting right above it. Um, I don't know. I think Larry might get into high lock fasteners. Um, they're just a weird type of fastener. Um, I think there's a video here. Yeah, this guy does a high lock. But you're not going to watch it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you're on your magic clicker. You're at it. Whatever you call it. It'll work fine. Invisible laser, whatever the hell. Laser pointer. You get a swip. You got to swap your. Uh, Pointer, I think. Or a pen? Or a, not a pen, but. That is one. Maybe if I go to here. It's showing up there. Oh, control. Control click. I do that. Let's see. Uh -huh. All right, but the high logs is with us lock bolts. You have to check link with the grip gauge again. I've already stuck it in the previous video to find out that my link should be 3 sixteenths of an inch. One thing you'll notice with high locks and lock bolts is they have a lip up under the head, which we have to account for. We commonly call this fillet relief. You can simply accomplish this by deburring the front side slightly. You don't want to go to the point where you countersink, but just enough to allow for a little lip up under the head. Because this is an interference fit fastener, this means that the fastener is larger than the fastener hole. You have to apply pressure. Sometimes Do I need to turn the words on? <laughs> it's not from California. You can tell he's from the south, not because of his accent. Sometimes by tapping my force on the hammer to actually install it. If I try to push it in with my hand, you'll notice that it will only go so far. What I'm going to do is back up my metal by simply using the vise. Now I'm actually going to take the hammer and apply a small amount of force. You'll notice it actually starts to pull the actual high lock down. Now, a properly installed high lock will actually pull down with the collar itself. For example, if I turn it around to the back, I'm going to put the collar on with the portion that has the hex head facing me away from it, like so. And I'm simply going to screw it down hand tight. Once it gets hand tight, I have to use a ratchet, socket, and an allen wrench. Now you'll notice this ratchet and socket actually has a hole in it where the allen wrench goes in. What I'm going to do, put it on, insert the allen wrench inside of it, <coughs> and simply tighten down. But the purpose of the Allen wrench keeps the high lock or the lock bolt from spinning. In this case, high lock. When I get to a correct amount of torque, the hex head portion of the collar actually breaks off, like you see here. Ideally, you want one to three threads to show it. High <coughs> lock. Another type of blind fastener type. I don't get how that's a blind fastener. You got to get a whole wrench in there. Yeah, but if there's no room on the other side where the head was, you didn't get didn't anywhere near the head. So you just have to insert it from the inside out? Yeah. I'm not saying it's the best thing. Okay, so high locks. Let me see. We know all about this. We can use this quite efficiently. Except what really is this for? What is the only times we can use this? Without chart? without having approved other data? Yeah, when, there's, when the torque spec isn't in the uh, repair manual. Okay, number one, the torque spec would be missing from the repair manual, which is not likely. Two, mm. what kind of
kind of bolts. Fine and coarse. Fine and coarse. Cad plated. So now they have to be cad plated. Oil free. They have to be oil free and they have to be clean. And what about the nuts to go on there? There's only a couple of nuts options. That get so could I use it for a stainless steel bolt? No. Can I use it for aluminum bolt? No. no. Nope. And there's only two types of nuts really mentioned here, and that's the uh, castle, nut. castle nut and the fiber lock, self-locking nut, the 365s and 364s. So really, that's the only time it's, we really narrowed it down. It got to be so. It wouldn't necessarily mean it can't be a uh, close tolerance bolt or a shear bolt or NAS. It just has to be a CAD plated bolt, steel, with one of these two types of nuts. So can I use this for a blind hole? No. no. I think you're pushing your luck on that. No. Just be, just know what it's for and what it's not. I know we're using it a lot in class. It's just kind of the go-to, but it's not as go-to as you might think. Uh, how often do you end up using something like this in the field? You shouldn't ever, really, unless you're working on an antique plane. If you're playing, yes. Is it Luscombe? Yeah. I would not be unreasonable to have this at all. But you're working yeah, but the repair modern. manual is like six pages. It is, yeah. <laughs> my airplane, no. If you're looking at this while you're working on my airplane, you screwed up somewhere. You're just missing something because it's in there. And if it's not, there's a chart just like this in there. Yeah. And that's something I noticed while I was working on uh, AN1. It's like I was reading the chart. It's like, oh, this is only for CAD play bolts with these nuts. So it's like, is that uh, what I still use? Just for our sake, for the class, but I just use the same torque value seen on here, even if I'm not doing a CAD plated nut. What are you going to use? Aluminum? I wouldn't. No, I'm not using aluminum. It would just be stainless steel. Or yeah, you could use it for stainless steel. Maybe for a little asterisk or something. Okay. I know that. Yeah. I have a question, a hardware question, but it's a little bit odd. Um, actually, recently on our airplane, there's the there's a cover for the springs for the rudder pedals, uh -huh. and it and it, um, my brothers took the carpet out because it was just like the most flammable thing in the world. But there was these, there was these spacers that I think that were originally under that thing, under that cover, that were aluminum. But there was only one, and I didn't know that. Uh, so he took it out and put it down, and it rubbed against the things. And he, he called me asking me what it should do, and I was, I, I, I guess go get some spacers because that's definitely not in the repair manual. Nothing. I've read that repair manual like three times, and it's so. No, it's not going to be. In there. It's definitely not. So I was like, well, how would I just on a, on a weird situation like that where it's like, what's approved to space out this cover plate? Um, you know what I'm trying to say? On, it used to be on top of carpet. Yeah, but not. even on the top of the carpet, I don't think it would have raised it up enough to um, to clear the springs. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Can you add a little spacer or something to yeah, it? Yeah, like, is that okay? I mean, how do I look up? Yeah, it's a non-structural cover, right? Yeah, it's non-structural. It's just to prevent shit from flying into it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I would have a problem with that or adding a shim under there or something. Okay. Just from what you're talking about, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Non-structural. I'm just wondering how should like, I should look something up like that to be... You're not. Okay. <laughs> you're not. Uh, torquing. Yeah. We already talked a lot about torquing in 309. I think, but I guess uh, that's why the whole torque chart came up. So, all right, we already know how to read the torque chart. Everybody's doing pretty well with that. Uh, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> all right, I'm looking at my notes. Things that I didn't talk about. Let's see. Screws. We had. What types of screws did we have? Oh, machine screws and washer, washer, washer. Okay, we had uh, structural. Same properties as a bolt. Generally speaking, has one on it. So I don't uh, it's going to have head markings to X. But. Okay. Um, have structural has what? Grip. 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 All right. Then we have machines, regular machine screws. Um, what kind of threads does it have? Fine or coarse? Fine. Oh, fine. Fine. Um, and then the PK screws, which um sheet metal screws or the other word you call them self-tapping screws yeah. because if you drill the right size hole in it it'll just kind of tap itself into it um, don't have standard threads though uh, let's see we have head styles and filister washer head truss head pan head countersunk i'm laughing because i have drive styles i have phillips 
read and print. And we had a tool room guy who, if you went to the tool room and asked for any, anything other than a slotted, he would tell you that we don't have it. And so you'd have to go look it up. So I wrote in my notes, there's slotted is a style. However, Snap-on does not make a slotted, so you'll have to settle for a flat tip. <laughs> <laughs> Just me being a smart ass. Because he was so insistent that we call them slotted, but Snap-on doesn't make a slotted screwdriver. They call them? Flat Let's see. <laughs> Aircraft screws generally come in four sizes. What are those four sizes? <laughs> Number 10, which is the same as a? 16 Quarter inch. Nope, that's a bolt. Screws. You said a number 10. Number eight. Number eight. Number six. Number four. Number four. Which one's the smallest? Four. All right. Uh, there is no such thing as a structural PK screw. Be aware of that. <coughs> structural screws. Yep. Pack that up. They have an X. So structural screws, just like your A in hardware, are going to have an X identifying it, or a dash if it's stainless steel. What are those things called that are riveted to the aircraft that have a nut inside? Nut plates. Nut plates. Or if they are for PK screws, what are they called? Tenement nuts. nuts. Okay. So you talked about the Dell clamps, rib nuts, Zeus camlock fasteners, blind rivets. Blind rivets. Uh, Cherry yeah. is a company that makes them. Uh, Cherry Max, Olympic, Huck. There's all kinds of different brands out there. All right, bolt torque. Back to my notes here. I think we've already written all this stuff down for, for 309. Bolt torque. Uh, let's see. Um, can we use impact wrenches on stuff? No. 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 Yeah, I wouldn't. That's kind of my thing about it. But, uh, I see like the <coughs> that way. Uh, let me see. Torque is based on what? Inch Stretch on the bolt. Yeah. Well, what, what, what is the determining factor on how much Oh, how many is? pounds of pressure are put on a given distance, in a given distance, right? The size of the nut. Oh, yeah. The wrench size. Oh. <laughs> the shank size. The shank size. The shank size. <laughs> I would think that nobody in this class yeah, would I know. That answering that, I feel like I'm just like, dude, do I really have to answer this right now? Yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Uh, several types of torque wrenches. All right, so we know that torque is based on not the head size, right? Although, you know, I did once have a graduating student stretch out the bulkhead out, out behind a spinner, spinner bulkhead on an airplane. He came, I just can't get this thing to click. And I'm like, well, what are you torquing it to? Well, 2,300 inch pounds. It's like, holy <laughs> freaking crap. Why? I'm like, well, because it's a three quarter inch wrench. So, you know, I say it over and over and over, but yet somebody's going to slip through the cracks and go, the only thing I really remember saying, something about the wrench size being the bolt size, so that must have been it. Why do we do inch pounds instead of, like, foot pounds, I guess? Well, in the torque convention of 1963, <laughs> we got together. <laughs> All right. To distinguish ourselves from car mechanics, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's like the, manual, the manuals we use... More than likely because car mechanics had it in inch pounds and foot pounds, they realized that we could never convert it ourselves. So we just if we just go all inch pounds, we'll be okay. This <laughs> idiots work out of their plane, so figure it out from there. All right. Um, so okay, so we're I think we're good with this chart. God, I hope we're good. Different type of torque wrenches. What kind of this is this? Click type. Click type. Yeah. How many times does it click? Once. 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 It, it it does. It's battery operated up at the top. It has a little switch. Says on off. <laughs> it does not. Yes, because I had another student who stripped out a whole string of bolts. What happened? Well, the torque wrench is broke. Well, let me see. I set it for a torque, went to the click. I'm like, it works fine. Oh! Oh, I thought it would just keep clicking like that. <laughs> like what? Like, you know, click, 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 click. It would make like a clicky noise. Why, why would you think that? 
it's got a little spring and it, it okay has anybody not had a chance to use one of these yet okay so if, if you don't know and I don't mean to make fun of anybody I make fun of you once I've told you once I've explained it then it's any fair game I'm sorry no I don't mean to make fun of anybody um, <laughs> I really don't where it's bad is when you don't know and you assume you don't know and you're afraid to ask or you do ask you get instructions and they weren't clear and you're like yeah I'll figure it out that's when things get really bad because we're about to go into building engines the very next class and we are going to be torquing a lot of stuff and there's very there's no forgiveness from this torquing these engines at this point you've had 309 you've had this class you know how to read a torque chart so if you don't know how to use a wrench, make sure you come and get me and we'll practice on the torque wrench thing because that's why I got it. So, But it just does one click when you reach the uh, torque. It's got a breakaway head that just clicks over oh, once. And uh, that indicates that you've reached the uh, torque limit of what you've set it for. Um, yes? For the engine side, I know we're not there yet, but just like in like... We're not? Well, just like in like M1 before. I'm glad he... Is it mentioned? In the engine, is it normally like quarter inch drive, three eight, half inch? Yes, yes, and yes. I have all three. All three? Yeah. Uh, one thing for those who are not intelligent enough or were not qualified enough. It's not about Marines. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, whenever we would use uh, these kind of torque wrenches, we would, whenever it would click, we would say click. So that way, to verify to ourselves and to the uh, inspector that was watching us torque, whatever it was, that we did actually reach that torque. We didn't go, hmm, good enough, and call it. We pull the wrench and we say the click with our mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and when it, when it does the click with the wrench. You just like, you're like looking at your shoulder and <laughs> click. It's <laughs> kind of Put a, on a, 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 a scene out of uh, Despicable Me, if you're not familiar with it. We, we tap our glasses and we say click with our mouth. Yes. Oh, it's fine. These, I got that same joke. <laughs> I'm just going to make fun of you. Never mind. All right. So we want to make sure that we, we understand. Uh, this is knurling right here. I don't know if you can see the knurling gun section right here. This is knurling. That's where we're going to look to hang on to the torque wrench. It's important that we hang on to the knurling part. Um, when we're done with the torque wrench, what, what setting do we leave it on? The lowest setting. Oh, yeah. The lowest setting. Setting, not unscrewed, the lowest mm -hmm. setting is where it should, should rest. So whenever you're done, do that. How often should torque wrenches be calibrated? Once a year. Once a year. The, the general industry standard or accepted number is one year. Um, but it needs to be 4313 does talk about one year in there. But if it gets dropped, it needs to be dropped or abused. Abuse is not a subjective. Yeah, what about neglected? That's a piece. <laughs> Uh, this is possibly the worst torque wrench in the world because it's got what looks like a grip about that long to hang on to and it goes up to, you know, 30 foot pounds. So, as inch pounds. pounds. I know, but the ones we have are terrible. Yeah, they go up to like 600 inch nice. pounds or something and they're yeah. this long, you know? It's like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, we got to use those. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then the dials, you, you like... Now, now I want to nice bring this point home because a lot of you guys are really confused by this. Yes, the dial does move. So you can see that right here it's resting. It's in its rest position, peacefully resting. And what does the dial currently say? 50. 50. So you can use it in a backwards fashion where, oh, I want to go to 50, so you can set it for 50 and pull it till it says zero. Follow? Oh, yeah. I prefer to do it the other way, but that is a personal preference. And what I do is I set the, this dial here, I'll turn it around, so zero is under here and I will pull it to the number I want. The reason why I prefer that is because every now and then you have to calibrate them and so this needle should not be under the zero, but maybe under the five or under the two, because when you get to say 50 inch pounds, it's really, on the, the machine may say it's only 48, then what do you have to do? Adjust. You adjust the zero, so I'd go negative two on it. So when I got to, when it, so then when you get to 50, it's a, it reads 50. It would get hella confusing if you were going 
backwards. Huh? Yeah, yeah it can confusing. be, but some people do it that way. And as long as you're not confused. So we want to calibrate it, check the cal These have not been calibrated here at the school ever. Now, if somebody wants to calibrate them all, I will show you how to do it, and that would be a great Saturday project for you. Um, we don't have these in, the, in there. We talked about these, 309. If you have a torque wrench that you want to use for the engine class, be it digital, not digital, whatever, you are welcome to bring it in. Just check the calibration on it before you use it. You're good to go. So I have no problem with that. Uh, remember the formula? Yeah. All right. So if it goes this way, the adapter goes this way, the dial is going to read more or less? Less. 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 And if it goes backwards, the dial is going to read more. more. And if it goes off to the side, yes. it it's pretty much the same unless you went out like a foot and a half that way to the side. Then it's going to start acting weird. So don't do that. Okay. Let's see. Well, then then you have enough room to rotate it in a way. All right, we're going to hold the wrench properly. We are going to, what, pull hard? No. Continue. Slow, Steven. steady. Slow, steady pressure. Don't jerk it. Now, if you're getting close to that, it might strip. Just jerk it real quick. It'll click. Um, <laughs> it's best if you don't start and stop, you know, because these have ratchets in them. Don't go click, 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 you know. You want to start, and when you get near that final torque, one steady move all the way around if you can help it. That starting and stopping is not good. Uh, okay, using the correct torque chart. What's the first thing we're going to look at? What's the prime? What's the the winner here? Maintenance manual. Okay, be specific. Uh, engine maintenance manual. <laughs> what if I'm working on my rudder? Rudder maintenance. Rudder maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> the applicable maintenance manual from the manufacturer. Uh, okay. Once inside of the manual, what am I looking for? A torque chart. Torque chart? No, I am not. Uh, you did the assembly? The manufacturer's specific item. Well, yeah, me neither. <laughs> manufacturer specific item. So in other words, we'll take an engine, for example, and I'm going to connect, I torque the connecting rods to the crankshaft, and I happen to notice that the connecting rods are 3 8 inch bolts. So do I go to a chart that says, oh, 3 8 inch bolts are this thread, and that's my torque? Oh. Yeah, you go to wherever it says that, that section. You're going to go to the thing that says connecting rod bolts shall be torqued to. Mm -hmm. You're always going to look for the specific item. Always. Uh, the brake calipers on my airplane, they were quarter 28. You notice I didn't go to a standard chart. I kept looking. I'm like, I know it's in the manual. I just can't remember the page. And I was looking for the specific brake caliper quarter 28 inch bolts <clears throat> until I found it. And they put it in the middle of a picture somewhere, off to the corner, in the picture. I'm like, thank you for putting it in the picture. But I knew it was there. Sometimes you got to look. Engines aren't quite that bad. So, but sometimes it'll be in the wording. They'll be talking about it. Now, assemble the connecting rods to the crankshaft. Uh, using a wet torque for such and such, torque each one to 480 inch pounds. Sometimes you'll have to go to a torque chart. You know, it'll say torque the connecting rod bolts. You're like, to what? You have to go to the back of the book to the torque section. It'll say connecting rod bolts for this style engine, that. And then sometimes you'll get there and there's nothing. And so if it's not in the written word, it's not in the torque chart, then what do you go to? Keep looking. Yeah. No. So it's, it's not in the written part, the narrative. It's like connecting rod bolts weren't called out specifically. Then you check the torque chart in the manual. Then it's going to be your basic torque. And so if you get down to that, and it wasn't in any of those, then what do you do? Jack, keep, keep looking. Keep looking, because it's there. It's a modern, modern compliance. It's there somewhere. The only time you should be going to the torque chart in 4313 is if you have an antique aircraft built back in the 40s. What about experiment? All right, so again, manufacturer specific, manufacturer's general, then 4313. And you're usually, you shouldn't be getting there. You have a list of all the torques for like if you're the common 
jobs that you do while you're playing? Do you keep no. Track of all the no, I, um, no. Sometimes I'll do like, a, as I make up a checklist and I know that like next time when I go to print my checklist, I will, I'll put, yeah. um, like we use several brake, cal brake calipers, yeah. torque too. Uh, it's there for spark plugs and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not a bad idea at all. If it's a checklist for a specific model of aircraft, like, yeah, it's a good thing. But, you know, you're correct. Mm -hmm. You guys want the lights off or on? I like this. I can see the screen. I can see it. I've been sleeping the past hour. That's what I've gotten so much done. Uh, okay, so again, manufacturer specific. I know, I'm being lazy tonight. I'm going to write stuff down for you. Manufacturer specific. But I'm, I'm general. I'm watching the man. He's writing down. So he's, he's, he's manufacturer huh? <laughs> general. Then manufacturer general. Then last. Last resort is 4313. All right, if necessary, we have to add friction torque to torquing. What is friction torque? Uh, the friction from the um, nut rotating against the bolt? No, that's the final torque. So maybe you have a self locking nut that takes 10 inch pounds to turn? Oh, it was, um, was it? That's your friction torque. Whatever it takes to get through. So if you're using a nylon nut and it's takes 10 inch pounds to actually screw it on, and you're supposed to torque to 50 inch pounds, what's your final torque? 60 pounds. 60, yeah, you gotta add that, that I torque. I think you called it, uh, oh, it's break time. Hey, Larry. I'm gonna interrupt for a second. Well, it's break time anyway. Okay, well. Perfect time.